afternoon. Please be seated. It is my privilege to convene the 2021 commencement ceremony for the Case Western Reserve University School of Law, where we will honor our graduates whose degrees will be conferred by Interim University President Scott Cowan on May 30th. We also welcome back graduates who received their degrees this past January and August, who have returned to campus today to join us in this celebration. You will find a program for this ceremony on your seat. It is now my honor to present one of our two deans of the School of Law, Michael Scharf. Thank you, Associate Dean Cover. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As, it's great. As co-dean of the law school, it is my great pleasure to welcome our faculty, our staff, and the members of the great graduating class to our commencement ceremony on this, the 129th year of this venerable law school. You know, this is really an unusual commencement in an extraordinary time. We're fortunate to be in person despite the coronavirus, but sad that we could not include our families and friends because of the health restrictions. We hope that they are watching the webcast. The class of 2021 has left an indelible mark on this law school. Your time here corresponded with shocking incidents of racial injustice, an incredibly divisive presidential election, and the worst pandemic in 100 years. You had to take classes, participate in extracurricular activities, and even socialize with friends remotely by Zoom. But rather than become distracted, you retained your focus Rather than become dispirited, you persevered. Within our virtual classrooms, you engaged in vigorous debates on the weighty legal issues of the day. You won unprecedented number of awards at national and international moot court and mock trial competitions. You edited and wrote impressive law review articles that will improve the law and in our clinics, our labs, and our externships, you've worked on cases that have changed and in some cases actually saved lives. You have made your faculty and your family and your colleagues very proud. Now, no one would ever say that law school is easy. It takes a family to thrive in this incredibly difficult environment. In addition to your own personal families and friends, it's also fitting that we take a moment to recognize the members of our law school family that played such a large part in your success. Let's begin with our remarkable staff who wisely admitted you to our school, who assisted you in your research through the library, who helped the faculty master Zoom teaching who counseled and advised you and helped you obtain your internships, your externships, your fellowships, and ultimately your jobs. Even today, many of our staff have been working hard behind the scenes to ensure the smooth running of this wonderful ceremony. Please join me in thanking our law school staff. And then there is our tremendous faculty who have taken you under their wings, they've taught and mentored you, and they've passed along their passion for the law. From them, you have learned to think, to problem solve, and to persuasively argue like a lawyer. Please join me in thanking our faculty who sit in the front rows of the 
group here today. Graduates, through your resolute effort, you have obtained one of the most powerful degrees in all of education. With it, you have become the guardians of our liberty, the champions of just causes, the protectors of the powerless, and the sage counselors of our society. The marathon that you began when you entered our doors is just about complete. There is one last challenge ahead for many of you. You know what I'm talking about. And it's an important one that will take substantial energy, focus, and perseverance during the coming summer. In recent years, a record percentage of our graduates have passed the bar exam. And we are confident that you will do what it takes to tenaciously meet that final hurdle to becoming a lawyer in the United States. Shortly, you will become alumni of this historic institution, forever part of the Case Western Reserve University family. My colleagues and I are excited to watch you on your journey, and we will help whenever we can. We want you to remain in contact, to share with us the stories of your first experiences, your challenges, and your glories. And we hope you will give your support to the generations of law students that will follow in your footsteps. Let me end by congratulating you for all that you have achieved and all that you will achieve in the years ahead. Now, it is my pleasure to turn the program over to Dean Cover for the presentation of our Student Service Awards. Congratulations, graduates. On behalf of the faculty and staff of Case Western Reserve University School of Law, I congratulate each of you on your graduation. It has been an honor to have all of you as students at our law school. We are very proud of your outstanding achievements both in and out of the classroom. We are confident you will excel in your professional careers and continu continue to contribute a great deal to your communities. You have chosen the legal profession, which is a service career. The law school recognizes that this class has continued a strong tradition of commitment to helping those who are less fortunate than we are. The volunteer work in which many of you have engaged is an inspiration to all of us here today. It is my privilege to recognize the winner of the Jacob Hecht Pro Bono Graduating Student of the Year Award. This award recognizes the student who completed the greatest number of pro bono hours during their time in law school. The School of Law established this program to encourage students to use their education and professional training to benefit the community, particularly underserved communities. This year's recipient is Laura Graham. Laura, please stand. Congratulations. It is also my honor to recognize the recipients of several other awards, all of which were chosen by a ballot of you, the graduating class. The awards for community service are given to an individual and to an organization that have made the strongest contribution to public service. This year's award for community service for an individual goes to Tanmay Shah. Tanmay, would you please stand? Congratulations. This year's award for community service for an organization, also chosen by a ballot of the graduating class, is the Black Law Students Association. I invite all of you who have contributed your time to BALSA to stand and be recognized. Congratulations. 
The Martin Luther King Jr. Award is given to the graduating student who, in the judgment of classmates, follows in character and conduct the spirit of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. This year's recipient is Isaiah Pinckney. Isaiah, would you please stand? Congratulations. The Student of the Year Award is given to the graduating student who, in the judgment of classmates, best exemplifies outstanding scholarship and excellence in extracurricular activities. This year's Student of the Year Award recipient is Greg Hilbert. Greg, would you please stand? Congratulations. Finally, the graduating students honor, through the School of Law Leadership Award, students who have made significant contributions to student organizations and fostered community within the school. This year's Leadership Award recipients are Isaiah Pinckney and Grace Salmon. Isaiah and Grace, would you please stand? Congratulations to all of you. Isaiah Pinckney is also the outgoing president of the Student Bar Association and our next speaker. He will announce some additional awards. Isaiah, please come up to the stage. Thank you, Dean Cover. In addition to the awards presented by Dean Cover, it's my honor to recognize the recipients of several other awards, each of which was chosen by a ballot of the graduating class. The Teacher of the Year Award recognizes a faculty member for his or her outstanding teaching and service. This year's recipient is Professor Peter Gerhardt. Though we tragically lost Professor Gerhardt this year, we are honored to have his daughter, Gracie, as a member of our graduating class. Gracie and Peter's wife, Ann Gerhardt, are both here with us today. Ms. Gerhardt, would you please stand? And please give a round of applause for Professor Gerhardt and his family. In addition, the LM graduating class voted on his LM Teacher of the Year Award. This award recognizes a faculty member for his, his or her outstanding teaching and service to the LM students. This year's recipient is Professor Jacqueline Celebrezzi. Professor Celebrezzi, would you please stand? Finally, the Dennis J. Jenkins Memorial Award for Administrator of the Year, recognizes an administrator or staff member for his or her service and dedication. This year's recipient is Michael McCarthy. Dean McCarthy, would you please stand? Now, I want to say congratulations to us, the class of 2021. When I was writing this speech, I thought about how we started. It was a new chapter for all of us. Some were coming right out of undergrad, others came from different careers and were starting over. It was anxiety inducing, and I felt some of that energy during orientation because we didn't know what to expect back in 2018. 
That anxiousness soon turned into reality as we asked ourselves how could we read all these cases, finish our papers while doing extracurricular activities like journal, mock trial, moot court, student orgs. Not to mention attending network events while searching and applying to jobs. People back home wonder why they didn't hear from us and didn't always understand, but we understood each other. I have to give Dean Berg a sharp credit. They told us during orientation that we were going to make lifelong connections here, even calling us some of us meeting our future spouses. As stressful as law school was, I still have good memories because of the people here and our classmates watching at home. It's corny, but I enjoy the company along the way, whether it was going out to bar review, attending major functions together, or simply talking to you on the bridge, or even via Zoom. I had the privilege of learning from you and learning with you. But in either case, I got to know some good people. We had some good discussions about the law and life, and we had some good laughs too. The first fall ball, ice skating after our fall finals, the party for Melanie and Sophia after 1L finals, where 90% of the class was probably there. Or when Greg took the heat for Jack, putting a picture of the Buffalo Bills quarterback jumping over the eagle in Professor Adler's Conlaw class. Jack later came clean and admitted it was him. Or when Professor Benza played Conjunction Junction in Crim Law to get us to remember to read each part of the statute. We made great memories, not just with each other, but with the faculty and staff as well. I'm not gonna name you all, but thank you for being a positive part of the law school and keeping your doors open for us to ask questions, vent, or to simply talk. The last year and two to three months have been eye-opening. The world shut down during spring break last year, and we thought it was gonna last until summer, maybe fall, tops. Boy, did we get that wrong. But we pressed on, we made the best of it. We did our competitions, classes, meetings, all via Zoom. And even though we did so begrudgingly. The pandemic helped open people's eyes to what many of us already knew. It gave us time to reflect on what's going on and around us, to start honest discussions on race, and other important issues. It sparked initiatives that I hope continue long after we leave here today. And it gave us the opportunity to show our resilience and demonstrate what roles can be once we leave here. I hope you don't forget some of the lessons we learned. One of the things that have stuck with me is Professor Gerard telling us at the end of torch class, always remember that it's about the client. And it's such a simple thing, right? But look at some of the laws that are being passed today. Some of those lawmakers were attorneys and learned some of the same things we did. What happened along the way? I hope that we are able to go out and bring positive change in our circles, wherever they may be. I think this year has shown us that we can be better if we just try to be. If we are just half as thoughtful as Professor Gerhardt, we could all bring that positivity anywhere we go. Let's continue to fight to free all of those who are oppressed. So with that, I will end. It's been fun. It's been an honor. I appreciate and love y'all. Congratulations. I look forward to seeing what's next for everyone. Thank you. Great pleasure to have James Chen, a 1991 law graduate, as our 2021 commencement speaker. Mr. Chen studied international criminal law when in law school, and at one point contemplated becoming a prosecutor. His interest in and commitment to environmental law and policy led him in a different direction, however, and at graduation he took a position through the Honors Hiring Program with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as an attorney advisor first with the Resource Conservation Recovery Act Enforcement Division, and later the Toxics and Pesticides Enforcement Division. Subsequently, Mr. Chen spent 15 years in the Environmental Practice Division of two prominent law firms, Hogan and & Hartson and Crowell and & Mooring. In 2010, he joined Tesla Motors as their Vice President of Regulatory Affairs and Deputy General Counsel. Then in 2018, he joined his current company, Rivian Automotive, a manufacturer of the world's first electric adventure vehicles, electric pickup trucks that perform like sports cars, 
where he is vice president for public policy. Much of his time is now spent educating lawmakers, particularly at the state level, about the promise of electric vehicles. He notes that his career path is a perfect example of how a law degree can help society become a better place. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jim Chen to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dean Berg, for that introduction. I am honored to address this year's Case Western Reserve University School of Law's graduating class. Good afternoon to all of you in person and by video feed, friends, family, faculty, staff, and alumni, and to the graduating class of 2021. Exactly 30 years ago this month, I was sitting where you are sitting today. Congratulations, your long, hard struggle is about to pay off, and your adventure moves to a new chapter. You put in years of study, hours of, hours of reading, analysis, and knowledge absorption. You spent countless sleepless nights debated, discussed, and distilled finer points of law, and filled pages of electronic and paper blue books, maybe, on your computers and likely in your dreams. So what words of wisdom can I offer you on this auspicious day? What insights might be of practical use? Experience is an incredible teacher. And through the course of my career, I have found three items that appear to account for success. And I want to share them with you. But before I go there, I want to reflect with you all what it means to be an attorney, a lawyer, a counselor, and a defender of the law. Our society is one of laws, laws intended to ensure social harmony and civil discourse. The profession you are about to embark upon is one of the noblest in our society, as we are the guardians and the administrators and sometimes the creators of those laws. Yes, I have heard the lawyer jokes and probably told quite a few of them myself. But underlying all the humor, the deprecation of our profession, and the digs at our chosen calling, the one undeniable truth remains. Lawyers are the Jedi Knights of modern society. You may chuckle at the notion, but the parallels are undeniable. When a controversial administration shut our borders, those fleeing tyranny, oppression, persecution, and death, lawyers rushed to the borders, to the airports, to the ports, to help those seeking asylum. When innocents are wrongfully incarcerated, lawyers, often working without compensation, fight to free them. When questions about election integrity arise, it is the work of lawyers and judges that ensure the truth is revealed. And when the environment is threatened by unwise development or fauna is being poisoned by toxic chemicals, lawyers defend nature and go on to found organizations like the Natural Resources Defense Council and the Environmental Defense Fund to further defend nature and the environment. The fight for truth Fairness and justice is never ending, but it is the lawyers, the Jedi Knights of our time, that lead in that struggle. That is why I'm very proud of our profession, and I'm honored to welcome you all to our ranks. So now that I've spoken about this incredible responsibility and the role of our profession, what is the secret to success as a lawyer? I promised the formula boiled down to three elements, and here they are. The first is to work hard. I know, you've just come off of three years of incredibly hard work and in a challenging environment. I did mention this was a never-ending struggle. But working hard doesn't, seem to mean, doesn't simply mean endless efforts or constant all-nighters. Being a lawyer is not a nine-to-five job, true, but it also means working towards an end goal. Efforts mean nothing without results. 
So as you practice your craft at law firms, in-house for corporations or nonprofits, in government, or on your own as a solo practitioner, ask yourself not only what effort is required, but what results are to be achieved, and strive to achieve those goals for your clients and for yourselves. When I started my career at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, I could not have imagined the journey that would unfold before me. All I knew is that I wanted to do my best. So as an enforcement attorney, I took on every case that came my, my way. I sought to post the highest number of actions, the largest penalties. And in one of those cases, I caught the attention of the lead partner of the environmental practice group at Hogan and Hartson. And when he offered me an opportunity to join that firm, I did so. Later at that firm, when I had an opportunity to pursue a new area of law, I took it. And this led to a developing a practice far more than what I could have envisioned when I was at EPA. And this hard work can coincide with your passions. When I joined Hogan, I found out that one of the main clients of this lead partner was the manufacturer of German luxury automobiles. Being a car guy, I asked him if I could try my hand at car regulatory work. Fortunately, he took a chance on me after having seen the hard work I had done and the results I had achieved. That led to my developing and pursuing a specialty in automotive regulatory law that led to another firm, and eventually not working for just one, but two of the most exciting entrepreneurs of our time. First for Elon Musk at Tesla, and now for RJ Scringe at Rivian. But hard work alone isn't enough. The second element to remember is to treat people as people, with dignity and respect, no matter where they are in their station in life. Some refer to this as network, but I'm not a fan of that term. Why? Because it infers a means to an end, that you want something from that person. When you meet someone for that first time, instead of asking what you can get from that person, Ask yourself what you can do for that person. How important is this? When I was interviewing for my first job at EPA, I met a young woman who was shepherding candidates like me through their various interviews. I didn't know who she was beyond, beyond her name, and I didn't know exactly what role she was serving, but she was kind, she was helpful, and devoted to the mission of the agency. I remember how, telling her how cool it would be to work for EPA and how much I wanted to help the agency with its mission. When I got off that phone call some months later, she told me I was number five on the honors hire list for the Office of Enforcement. Unfortunately, there were only four slots, and the first four had accepted. Yes, I was disappointed, but I kept up my job search. Several months later, that same woman called me again to let me know that one of the four had dropped out, and there was a slot open. I asked her to let me think about it, and she gave me a week. After that week, I did have several other prospects, and I told her I could not, in good conscience, hold up that slot. So to offer that to the next person in line, that's when I learned that she had sought me out specifically, and that if I didn't take that job, the slot would simply be dropped. Did I mention that I was in Canada at the time, at the University of Western Ontario, as part of the Canada-US Law Exchange Program with CASE? Yes, this woman, who I found out later was the special assistant to the director of civil enforcement, had to get permission and use a dedicated phone with international dialing capability at a federal agency just to seek me out. And remember, the cell phone had not yet been invented. And it was all because, as she later told me, I had made such an impression on her with my desire to help EPA and its mission, mission and my sincerity to her. That contact set me on the first, first steps of my path that has led to an amazing career, one for which I am intensely and immensely grateful to her and to that partner who took a chance on me and for everyone that has helped me along the way. This same approach, treating people as people, has also led me to my current role. After leaving Tesla, I was at another startup electric vehicle company and I happened to see on LinkedIn that one of my former firms had just named um, a former colleague to general counsel at this new and exciting electric vehicle company, Rivian. 
I sent my former colleague, Neil Citron, a note to congratulate him on his position. Although I was not looking for a change of position at the time, I did want to congratulate Neil for joining in the mission of electrification. Nine months later, as I realized it was time to move on from my position, I called Neil to see if he had any ideas of who might be looking to retain someone with my experience. 30 days after that call, I became Rivian's Vice President of Public Policy. Did I know that I would be in the job market again when I reached out to my former colleague? No. But I did want to congratulate Neil on his successful appointment. The third and final element, and the secret to what I believe has been my career, has simply been this, luck. Funny as it sounds, luck has played a huge role in my career. I was lucky to end up at EPA in 1991 when the legal market was in a slump. I was lucky that in 1996, after the federal government had shut down for the first time, that the largest firm in DC was looking for a new associate with the experience that I had had. And I was lucky that a partner of mine and another firm was connected through family to an executive at Tesla that led me to have the role that I do in the exciting world of new transportation and clean energy. It is true that unlike the other two elements, luck is something you can't control. However, I have found that if you take care of the first two elements, the third often takes care of itself. So I say again, congratulations, Case Western Reserve University Law School graduates of the class of 2021. As you go forth and make your mark in the world, I wish you success and I wish you good fortune. And remember, as you do strive to do well, fellow Jedi Knights, remember to also do good. Thank you for the honor of being able to share my story. And once again, congratulations. Thank you, Jim, for those very inspiring words. And I wish at this point we had lightsabers to give you, but uh, we do not. Uh, instead, I will turn it over to Professor Jonathan Gordon, Assistant Dean Michael McCarthy, and Professor Jack Turner for the presentation of your diplomas. For this challenging year, in recognition of the fact that many members of the class of 2021 are unable to join us in person and are instead participating in this ceremony from all corners of the globe by watching our live stream, we will be calling the names of all of our graduating students, whether they are here or absent. Deansburg and Scharf, faculty and honored guests, it is my great privilege to present the class of 2021 graduates who have received the Doctor of Juridical Science. This terminal degree is awarded for two or more years of advanced academic study and research in the field of law. Khalid Muhammad Alashkari. Khalid Abdulhamid Khalaf Aldas. Mohammed Juma Aldahamna Haldamni. Hamid Mohammed Zayed Alese. Ahmed Al Habib. Ahmed Abdulatif Al Jarala. <laughs> Fawaz Mohammed Al Jarki. 
Abdul Aziz Almayel. Yusuf Yaqub Almansuri. Caliph Al Shamari. Shuki Chen. Walid Mohammed El Sur. Erman Eraglu. Dean John Kelly. Saad Kashman. Abdullah Yaya Marwi. Hamdan Murad Abdullah Muhammad. Samet Tatar. Dinakpong Luke Rodrigue Chobo. Miao Wang. Dejin Zhang. Deans Berg and Scharf, faculty and honored guests. It is my great privilege to present the class of 2021 graduates who have received the degree of Juris Doctor. Christina Lene Ayad Toss. <laughs> Philip John Albers. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Ammerman. Timothy Carl Anderson. Jeremy Maxwell Arnoff. Cheng Day Beck. Hannah Lania Baker. Brandon M. Ball. Jonathan Thomas Bannon. Nicole Ria Bangdia. Sophia Bilius. Anna Francesca Borromeo. David P. Bowles. Madeline Braver. Dylan Cisco Brown. Emily Elizabeth Calla. Mukta Padmini Chilakamari. David Alexander Kodaspodi. John F. Collins. Kristen Jenny Elder Connors. Daniel Duane Dallas. Braden James Davis. Maeve Patricia Deneen.
Nicole Lee DiVittorio. Anthony Allen Duckett. Lauren Burley Durham. Jasmine Lee Edwards. Asako Ejima. William Wiltbank Estes. Lacey Marie Ferrara. Nicholas Patrick Fink. Margaret Rose Flynn. Caroline R. Ford. Joseph T. Freight. Calvin Josiah Fries. Julie Ann Gabella. David Wyatt Galehouse. Grace Kendall Gerhardt. Connor Albert Gibbons. Michael Harrison Gibbons. Christopher David Glass. Haley Louise Gold. Timothy Robert Gower. Laura Catherine Graham. Emma Nicholson Green. Claire Ann Grega. Rachel Renee Hallman. Mackenzie Lutz Hartman. Russell Alexander Hauser, Jr. Jordan Marie Hawk. Joseph Arthur Hazel. Gregory Eric Hilbert. Justin J. Hill. <laughs> Emily Reed Hoffman. Henry Allen Holmes. John Patrick Holzheimer. Amanda Marie Hudson. Ethan Amder Isaacson. James Stephen Jaworski III.
Chelsea Caitlin Johnson. Bethany Gump Jones. Kyle Thomas Jorstad. Daniel Jeremiah Kalmbach. Anjali Sunila Kunwar. Ryan Gregory Kerfoot. Do Yon Kim. Gahyon Kim. Melanie Elizabeth King. Courtney Renee Koski. Carly Kathleen Koza. David Michael Krawick. George G. Catrolli. Francesca Isabella Lemontaine. Rachel Lynn Lamparelli. Emma Rebecca Lawson. Hyo Jong Lee. Brendan Denny LeMay. Lindsay Madeline Leonard. Natalie Suzette Lesnick. Chong Liu. John M. Livingstone. Elliot J. Logan. Alexandria McKenna Lundberg. Christina Wanshin Luo. Kristen Nicole Lyons. Megan Kelly McCallum. Amanda Faye McCool. Marcus Trent McCrary. Catherine Elizabeth Maloney. Blair Justine Mills. Caroline Helen Mills. Peter Ryan Molenhauer. Salia Z. Moore. John Patrick Murray. Evan James Nydig. Manal Nizam. Lucas Glenn Nordyke. Benjamin Francis North. Kylie Rose Novak. Present. 
Andy Nunez Sanchez. Natalie Claire Ehlers. Michaela Luisa Ortiz. Luke Robert Palmer. Divyong Prakash Patel. Pooja N. Patel. Joshua David Payne. Brittany M. Penn. Jonathan D. Perry. Alexander Ellis Peters. Emily Page Peters. Isaiah Howard Pinckney III. William Wade Pinkley. Shalanda R. Plowden. Christine Marie Pakrovka. Emily Ann Port. Audrey Yukon Michael Quinn. Joshua Benjamin Rhines. Jared Joseph Roberts. Grace Elizabeth Salmon. Elizabeth A. Safier. Bryce Patrick Saunders. Christine Grace Scherer. Sarah Jessica Schneider. Bridget Marie Sesento. Jeffrey Paul Scott. Kenneth Lewis Semeraro. Renali Saiti. Tunme VJ Shah. Claire Keana Shin. Quentin L. Sims. Fatima Bint Khalid Smith. Rebecca Catherine Smith. Lewis Russell Smoot III. Reed Wesley Steffen. Charlie Rayan Thomas. Yvette Nakoshi Thompson. Kingsley C. Yomedia. Adriana Velasquez Martinez. 
Jessica Taylor Warshaw. Regan Kinsey Weber. Gloria Ashley Wetzel. Paul Matthias Ming Willison. Emma Kaziah Wilson. Gabrielle Marie Wilson. Jesse Tyler Wynn. Zaihan Shu. James Bernard Young II. Present. CUNU. Michael B. Zucker. It is now my privilege to present the class of 2021 graduate who has received the degree of Master of Arts in the field of patent practice. Nathan Nathaniel Taylor Trujillo. It is also my privilege to present the class of 2021 graduates who have received the degree of Master of Law. Samantha Lynn Crane. Aliyah Nichols, Allison Stewart Rushi, Deans Berg and Scharf, faculty colleagues, and honored guests. It is my great privilege to present the class of 2021 graduates who have received the degree of Master of Laws in United States and Global Legal Studies. International Business Law, International Criminal Law, or Intellectual Property Law. N.G. Akbar. Abdullah Ibrahim Aldusari. Hamad Shafi Aldosari. Hasna Mohammed Al Harbi. Sara Mohammed Al Harbi. Ahmed Suleiman Al Far. Bayan Abdul Rahman Al Marwani. Hen Ali Al Nutafi. Suleiman Al Bumoshin Al Tawani. Rawan Dafala Al Zarani. An Wei. Edvinus Brzauskas. Chai Han Fong. Chun Dan Zi. Chun Lin Wei. Amara Duambia. Du Fong. Ikichuku Namdi Ikeke. Fong Pong Yuan. Fong Wei Wei. Yu Sin Yi. Huang Shi Ran. Jai Ya Hui. Jai Zhong Wei. Li Ji Dong. Li Jai Lin. Li Shong. Li Yi Hui. Li 
Zong Yu. Lin Bo Song. Leo Yuan Cho. Lu Young. Nei Dan. Cho E Chong. Chu Hao. Xia Chong Lin. Shi Lin. Sun E Chi. Present and walking. Last name spelled S U N. Wong Du Hu Xiao. Absent. Wong Hao Li. Absent. Wong He. Absent. Wong Meng Ming. Absent. Wong Pu. Wong Xi Li. Absent. Wong Yi Chao. Absent. Wong Yu Yin. Absent. Wong Yun Hao. Wei Hao. Wei Xiang Dong. Wu Wu Fei. Xiao Zi Hao. Shu Chong. Young Bo Han. Young Guang. Zhang Pei Pei. Zhang De Lu. Zhang Hong. Zhang Xin Yi. Zhang Xiu Mei. Zhang Yin Jiao. Zhang Yuan. Zhang Yu Nan. Zhao Xian Yi. Zhou Yi Ping. Zhu Lin Han. Please join me, everyone, in offering a big round of congratulations and applause for all members of the Case Western Reserve University School of Law, Class of 2021. Congratulations, everyone. Good job. We have reached the close of our celebration. In a moment, the recessional will leave Freiburger Field. Graduates should remain in their seats until the faculty have recessed and the marshals direct your row to the exit. In addition, please make sure to move away from Freiburger Field and off toward the School of Law before stopping to converse or take photographs on East Bell Commons. Before I wrap up, I would like to recognize Professor Peter Gerhardt, who passed away suddenly in February. Peter was a noted scholar and cherished colleague. He truly loved teaching and freely gave much of his time and energy to our students. His contributions to the university and more importantly, to the people in it, have been widely recognized. Most recently, you selected him as our 2021 Law School Teacher of the Year and voted unanimously to make him the 3 a class gift memorial bench in his honor that will sit in the law school courtyard, a space in which he often could be found 
working away on one of his books. Peter, you are with us in our hearts today as we and your wife, Anne, watch your daughter, Gracie, along with the many other students whose lives you touched, graduate today. We will miss you. As you begin this next phase of your life, consider the words of Maya Angelou. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Make every effort to change the things you do not like. If you cannot make this change, change the way you have been thinking. You might find a new solution. With these final words, I now declare an end to our 2021 commencement. Thank you and good luck. <laughs>